Hello. <laughs> Sunday evening before Good Friday. So how are you all doing? Well, I'm doing this video because really there's quite a lot of talk about Twin Flames and it is a vast subject. I'm just going to talk about it from my perspective and my experiences because it is quite profound and there are Twin Souls and Twin Flames and da 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 da. My Twin Flame is in spirit which makes it more difficult. But anyway, I just wanted to say that I came through the ordeal. Do you remember two or three times ago I did a video about the abyss and travelling through that darkness to reach the higher well I must have made it because I had an experience a few days a few weeks ago was it weeks ago a few weeks ago when I had the visitation from my twin flame and I was I don't know quite overwhelmed by it to be honest because I didn't know what it was initially but this huge orb of white light appeared above me and showered me with this white light all around me and this is the twin flame I know it's a twin flame because he came to say some days later that that's what it was. I still don't fully understand it. But it's more, it's not so much a matching of another person, but the twin flame is called the alchemical marriage and it happens actually within the self. It's the marriage between you and your higher self. It isn't so much a being. I'll read this little bit out to you because this is from a place called the Summit Lighthouse. If you want to look at it further, you can look look them up. It's, she, she, it's, it's an organisation in America called Summit Lighthouse. I'm just going to read the first little bit because it is quite profound. <laughs> and I, 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 we may not understand it, but I just wanted to read it out because this is kind of the official version. There are so many versions. People say so many things on the internet and so forth. And this is from the horse and as if you know what I mean. And and they seem to match my experience. So he says that to establish a true alchemical marriage, which is what it really is, cosmic law requires that we first define our own identity with God before we can completely unlock the spiritual potential of our twin flames. For until the twin flames achieve a certain level of mastery and oneness with their own real selves, they are often unable to cope with the weight of their negative karma, which can often be amplified by the presence of a twin flame. The twin flame seems to be a masculine. It's the, it's the polar opposite of the feminine. doesn't matter whether you're male or female, it's just it's the opposite. And it's a twin flame, which is the holy I am presence. When you match up with this twin flame through this alchemical marriage, you are merged then with the holy I am presence, the presence of God, as I understand it. It is quite a complex thing, but I do feel that's what happened to me. I had gone through this tremendous, well, I, I, I don't know, a challenge whatever in order to achieve that mating or the marriage with the divine self I, th I understand that once you've made this connection which does take many lifetimes apparently you sometimes meet the complement of your opposite sex on this plane so whether I'm going to meet somebody else to help with my book publishing which is what I desperately need I've got books to go out A I don't have the finance and not a publishers want paying and I don't have any mental energy at the moment to do it I've got lots of stories to go on Amazon so this is my next project but I do need help I need help with somebody who's got the experience and possibly a bit of finance <laughs> so so that's where I'm at really so I it does feel a very very profound connection it's it is the, the, the connection with with the I am presence God self more than the higher self as I understand it and I do feel I was <sighs> I'm not so we have I don't have conversations with spirits, but I was explaining to them how I feel. I, you know how we're always searching for one. Well, not I'm saying that we are. I, I am. I don't know. Just possibly we are searching for the other half. 
you know, we go through all these different love affairs and connections and it's never quite right. We're looking for the other half of ourselves. Well, this spiritual connection, that fl twin flame, is the opposite part of ourselves. And it is like a marriage. It's a merging of the ha my higher bit and the other higher bit. And a song came to me, a lovely song. Um, I've been waiting all my life to give you all my love. And the love I have never experienced anything like it. As you know, because in my own lifetime and experiences, I've had very little love. This was overwhelming. I mean, it wasn't just love. It was overwhelming. And it seemed as though many lifetimes, I guess, it's taken to get to this point of being with this. I don't know where he's been all the time doing his own thing, I guess. So it's kind of emerging of the two selves into one oneself and it does feel like the two halves come together and it is actually it does feel like that because I was saying to this being <laughs> I felt very safe I felt very very loved and I know I'd come home it was a feeling of coming home I don't feel so lonely or so alone because I've got this connection now with this other self, my other self. I have got a name, but I'm not sure about it, so I wouldn't say it anyway. But it does feel to me that it's quite, it's quite an achievement, especially at my age. Gosh, I've got another very high birthday coming up. I mean, there isn't that longer to go for me, I don't think, really. Although I want to get these books out first. So I'm pleased I've accomplished this before I leave. Because I don't think you could do it on the inner planes. I don't know. Just hang on a minute. I just want to look at this see what time it is. Six minutes. So I don't know whether I could do a, a second video with this because um, I'm just aware that there are, there are so many people now on the internet giving their ideas of the fifth dimensional symptoms and ascension symptoms. Now I'm already there, I'm in the fifth dimension, I know that. Whether I'm ascended or not, I think I probably have with this connection. I'm not quite sure, I'm still working on that. But it is, I think, well, maybe I should have a go and, and, and say what my, my symptoms have been because they, I think we're getting to a time now more and more people will be experiencing them. These solar flares and CMEs are really hotting up. They're hotting up the energies. And it's bringing out a lot of very difficult, you know, stuff for us to deal with. As you know, I've had, well, I've been here on my own in total isolation for seven years. No friends, no family, just here nipping out for shopping now and then and just processing being on my own ready for this huge event personally for me but it's also I think a time of complete isolation when I had to go within to, to clear the mind out and the past lives and all the stuff you know and it often can't be done when you've got a job to do and family so I'm very lucky to have that time to, to, to you know to complete this really so some of the symptoms have been pretty horrifying and there was uh, somebody on the internet the other day who channels angel messages and I thought I had to respond because it was so accurate that he said it said that you will lose your memory from time to time and of all the physical symptoms I've had, and I'm, I'm in a lot of pain a lot of the time, as you know, dizziness, nausea, dreadful insomnia. I don't sleep for days on end. But I think this is the most difficult, was the mental one, because I was quite frightened. Because I started this, don't forget, 40, 50 years ago, or 40 years ago, and I've been on my own for the last 30. So some of the symptoms I've been through, I've had little breakdowns. I don't call them mental breakdowns, but little breakdowns in health and, and mental stability. And some of these things are really quite frightening if you don't know what to do with them. I, I, I was fortunate. I think I... Although I was expecting it, I think I did have some idea because I've had them several times and they have been very difficult. And the one is the mental one. I used to wake up in the morning and I was, like part of me was asleep, part of me was awake and I could watch my mind. You know how when you have these quick downloads on the computer, don't switch off, you've got a download. <laughs> the speed, the speed. The, I was watching like a film of all my thoughts, rapid, rapid, rapid. It lasted about half an hour. Initially I felt quite panicky because I did feel out of control. I thought, oh gosh, this is a mental thing. What do I do? So I thought, oh, just, just trust in my higher bit, you know, to see me through and had to relax into it it did eventually pass but if it gets really severe I would say poetry or 
sing a hymn or do something to counterbalance the activity of my brain which seemed to be rather out of control I had to bring myself into control so I think that that was probably the, the worst experience and of course the memory loss you've had seen my video about my time losing I mean I go sometimes for two or three two or three hours I don't know where I've been what I've been doing and it is getting a bit serious because of course I'm getting older I, I don't think it's to do with old age although possibly it is my memory my short-term memory is I, I sometimes don't know when I've had a shower. <laughs> I think, oh, was it yesterday? You know, I have to keep a list now of things I've done. Changing the sheets, for instance, washing and the ironing, going shopping. I think, well, gosh, I only went yesterday. Things like that, that the time is catching up on itself. So in order to feel in control, I, I make a list out and keep, yeah, OK, I did the sheets last week or whatever, you know. So I've got some idea that I'm in control of things and what I'm doing especially when I'm driving, although I have lost the car a couple of times. But I think it's the memory thing that's got me more, more difficult, in a most difficult state. I'm a depression, dreadful depression sometimes, and I find that once an energy has been and gone, and it comes mostly with these CMEs and solar flares, once it's given you a blast, it's left you with all this stuff, you know, that you have to deal with, it brings it out. I had a, a really weird dream, which I won't tell you about, because it was a bit of a sexual thing. But it was a, a, a horrible dream. I thought, where on earth did that come from? And I've been out two days without sleep, two nights without sleep. That is frightening, because you get quite panicky. What can you do at night, you know? And I'm on my own. I put the radio on or the television on, but this isolation at night is pretty scary, to be honest. I didn't know. I cannot go to sleep. So this dream, when I woke up this morning, I thought, I'll have some breakfast. I had about an hour I think in the end and I decided to go back to bed which I did in this dream those sort of things I think I've mentioned before in my dream video they're not dreams there's something I was needing to learn I'd been for two at nights no sleep you somehow have to go so deep within yourself and your subconscious that it drags out these weird experiences that you perhaps wouldn't know about otherwise I've got a feeling I rubbed my arm <laughs> there you go, I could talk forever, couldn't I? So there we are, darlings. I mean, I, if you want to know more, I, I can do another video on it because it is a very complex thing. But but this twin flame thing, what happened to everybody in time, is just, you know, a question of getting ready for the matching up and the, and the marriage, called chemical marriage. Okay, darlings, take care. Have a good, week, good Easter. God bless.